This is the Jagdpanzer E100, a tier 10 German tech tree super heavy tank destroyer. A vehicle that I just spent about 20 minutes recording a video on, and then as soon as I finished and dragged the files into the video editor, I realized that I accidentally started recording when I wanted to end the recording, and vice versa. So it's just a clip of me sitting staring at a tank in my garage. Whoa! Either way, the good news is that we have our uh, our little battle logs there, so you can see we played two battles in the Yag for the video, and did 3,700 average damage. And now, we're gonna go take a look at both of those games, because they literally just happened. The first game I actually did want to showcase, though, was one that I performed yesterday in my Yag on live stream on Molendike. Personally, I think the Jagdpanzer E100 is is actually overpowered right now. Um, there's a lot of people that don't understand why I think this, and I'll explain. Wargaming has buffed this tank over and over and over, to a point now where the vehicle features just kind of everything. It has a gun, which deals 800 damage per shot, which it's always had. What it didn't have was tungsten. And Wargaming said, you know what, let's give it Tungsten. I wouldn't be surprised if Wargaming experiments with giving the 183 Tungsten, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, so this vehicle, it got Tungsten. Which now means that you can roll 915 damage per shot when you activate it. Not only that, but Wargaming made its accuracy slightly worse, and then they buffed its aiming time. But they buffed the aiming time enough that if you just run Refined Gun, you will aim in faster than it previously did, while also having the capability to have better dispersion than it previously would have, which allows you to do things like this. I'd, I'd like to see somebody in a VZ, E100, or any other Tier 10, a 183, snap that shot there, because you couldn't. Uh, the Agpanzer is not incredibly slow, and in fact has a very similar power to weight to the FE2 and 5B183, and uh, here comes the best part about the tank, it has armor. It, in fact, has a lot of armor. Its superstructure is about 350 millimeters thick, and if you angle it properly while using slight gun depression, even vehicles like a Kron using Calibrated are going to struggle to cut through the vehicle. It's stupid. The Jagdpanzer is really stupid. Now, that's not to say it doesn't have weaknesses. If you get to the side of it, it's very easy to farm and rip apart. Its trap wheels are big, and they're easy to shoot. But, I mean, if you play the tank with a brain cell, and you have a tune mate, or you just put it in a position where you have teammates around you, there's really not much of a counter to this tank. Like, what was that Strixfon gonna do to me there? I bonk him for a thousand health, and dude's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, he can't rush me. If he does, I have literally more DPM than him. Because you have to realize, even with Calibrated, I've got about 2,700 DPM. But I also have my shell loaded before we even fight, which means it's 2,700 DPM plus 800. So I actually have around 3,500 DPM sitting in my gun. That's pretty dangerous, and it's why you don't really want to fight this vehicle. Plus, you're going to be loading gold rounds to try and pen this vehicle half the time. It's just not a tank you mess with. The is going to try and send my tune mate, and I'm going to bonk him for... Oh, 958. We are already up to 3,800 damage in this game, which is just insane when you think about it. So now we're going to reload again, and I'm going to bonk the Emil 2. I know that my tune mate's going to be able to clear the IS-8, so I'm going to get a bonk into you. Bit of a low roll, but 768, not too bad. People always complain that the Yag low rolls its shots, and honestly, I don't really see it. This game, we didn't low roll a single shell. I mean, we had a 768, but that's not really a low roll. That's a pretty average roll for the vehicle. And uh, then we hit him back for an 843. You add those two together, and that's literally our average damage. We did 5,500 damage in our game. And I mean, we literally put in about two ounces of effort to do this damage. This is kind of what the Yag's like now. Like, every time I drive the vehicle, it feels like I'm taking candy from a baby. The vehicle just bonks and bonks and bonks. So 5,500 damage, easy top on the team. Now let's make our way to this Mayan Rune games that we literally played 10 seconds ago. And uh, you're going to see again just what the Yag can do. So let me skip ahead a little bit until we actually make our way into some gameplay because nobody wants me, or nobody wants to watch me drive for 10 minutes into battle. That is the one nice thing about uh, at least having the replay. So we can see there's a 5A in front of us. And somehow I actually get spotted. I don't know how I get spotted. It's probably from the Leopard or something because it wasn't that 5A. He wasn't poking. So I, I don't really know what detected me, but not really my problem. The 5A is oblivious to the tanks on the side, and we activate Tungsten, and there you go. 909 damage into his vehicle. I mean, what the heck? 
That's so dumb. So now we're just going to head into the front. Now you'll notice I'm not running tungsten and adrenaline. And it's quite simple why. If you are, you're going to be putting yourself in a really awkward situation. It's a tank destroyer. And it's a very large tank destroyer with very easy flanking capabilities. You're going to see that when the leopard pushes me. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to put yourself in a spot where you can easily get pushed. So, ideally, you are going to... You're just going to want to run two repair kits. Personally, I like tungsten over adrenaline. While you do get more DPM with adrenaline, about 5% more, and you get more module damage, you will just deal more with tungsten, which is always nice. It, it scares people. If you have tungsten activated, people do not want to push you. Uh, I actually think this would be a great comp tank because of the alpha and the tungsten. So, <laughs> VK just drives out in the open, and uh, yeah, dude just regretted life quite a bit there. We're up to 3,000 damage, which is kind of insane already. And what is that, three shots we fired? Yeah, it is three shots. Now the WZ is going to aim on us. He's like, I don't know where to aim. Fires an AP shell. And, uh, oh, he taps me, loses another 200. So we max roll him for a thousand, and then, uh, yeah, I, I don't think he enjoyed that. So you can see now, we've got a leopard on our rear. That's 4,000 damage per minute on our rear. Thankfully, he's bad, so we've been able to get some bounces. Now, the best way to deal with this leopard is to just, uh, put my tank on this wall here, and then turn like this. Because what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna force him up that hill. I could have turned the other way, but... It's easier to just force him into our teammates like this, and now he can't really do anything. So, now we're just gonna bonk the enemy KPZ, and just like that, I mean, we're up to 4,700 damage, and it's the easiest win ever. Again, this is just what the Yag does. It doesn't care about your hopes, it doesn't care about your feelings, and we tap the Leopard to finish him off. So there you go, pretty solid game, not too bad at all. <laughs> just such a stupid tank. And as I said, the gun, it just feels great. Like, after playing the BZ-75, uh, and then driving this tank, which has the HE Alpha of the BZ, without the downsides of terrible accuracy, I mean, look at the gun's accuracy. It's 0 .31 with refined. That's really accurate. And its aiming time is the same as most heavies, like an E100, E75. Its pen is insane, 314 on the standard, 420 on the heat. It's got nasty HE Alpha. It's got decent mobility. The tank is just absolutely devastating. Personally, I believe the Yag is one of the most dangerous tanks you can roll up against, especially if you're in a situation like Himmelsdorf where you have to fight it on the heavy side. There's really not much you can do. If it's being guided in the hands of a skilled player, this is a really, really scary tank. I just realized my hair looks so doofy today. It's got like a like a curl. I don't I didn't do it. I just woke up and started recording, so my hair is uh, pretty bad right now. Usually I shower in the morning but uh oh well hopefully you enjoyed today's video i think this tank is insane and it's a pretty good shout to grind if you're the kind of player that sees oh my god the 183 or the 4005 they've got high alpha just go for the yag the yag is better in every way you'll live longer you'll deal more damage and you'll learn why you should go to certain sides of the map over others because this tank's slow and if you go alone you're gonna get rushed and killed so i actually think it's a proper tank to learn how to play the game plus if you're one of those super heavy players who likes to camp and spawn well guess what if you drive this tank at least you have the excuse that you're or a tank destroyer i've always never really understood that like why are you gonna grind a heavy if you're just gonna sit in the back like you clearly see the difference between a heavy and a tank destroyer but what do i know i'll see you all in the next one Bye bye